No, 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 no. You will, you will keep on moving this. You will be free. I keep on focusing. Okay. So, uh, so it, it is on uh, leadership in the Yuga Ramayana. So, how, how Ramayana views at the, the concept of leader. So, that will be the uh, topic of uh, our present discussions. Now, uh, most of you know the Ramayana. So, I will not waste time telling you the telling, yeah, yeah, telling you the story. But uh, there is not just one Ramayana. There are many Ramayanas. Yes. So, so uh, one scholar named Weber, uh, one German scholar, because uh, uh, during the colonial rule, many Germans uh, were, were studying from school. So, so one scholar named Weber said that uh, as many texts, so many Ramayanas. Mm. As many? As many texts, so many Ramayanas. So, so the number of texts are, are, are also very. Uh, Ramayana has got many, many texts. Mahabharata, you will see Mahabharata as having one text, but that text will have n number of uh, uh, what do you say additions in it. Ramayana also has additions, but uh, but there will be no additions. So right now, uh, to convey the message of leadership, I think one Ramayana text of Valmiki Ramayana is more than sufficient to And I will be developing the story of Ramayana. So the story of Ramayana based on the based on the concept of leadership. So so that will be my uh, the way we will be developing the, the lecture. Or lecture, how much other lectures are required uh, we will be having. Now uh, so for you to know one thing, Ramayana has got seven sections in it. Seven sections in it and each section is called Kanda. 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 So 
you have certain leaders who have become gods and so we cannot examine something which is negative about them. So there may be some leaders about whom they suffering that is something negative, people don't take it objectively. Yes. It is taken subjectively. So I would say that leadership ends at Godhood. So, so once you, so, so the leader is similar to being a God, then you are not supposed to speak anything negative about that person. You are not supposed to examine that person objectively. So, so that is there. Now if you look at Ramayan, see, Valmiki Ramayan has never thought of Ram as God. Ram is a king. Ram is a human being. Okay? So, so there are chances that Ram can also go wrong. Yes, and, 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 and he can also go wrong. But then tradition. So created with Ram as Mariana Purushottam Ram, there you can see the objective examination of Ram stop. Then each and every action which Ram did was something which is not was to be justified. So suppose if I say that Ram did the wrong thing in this one? In sending Sita to, to the forest which was yes, in sending Sita, yeah, because as a because as a human being, he is not supposed to send up his wife who is pregnant yes. to the forest unparalleled. Fortunately, it was said Valmiki who, who took care of her, but that is that is her fortune. Isn't it? So, so here we start that then there are some people who say that it is not Ram who sent Sita to the forest. It is Raja Ram who sent Rani Sita to the forest. So now you start to enter into the arguments of justifying the actions of a, of a particular person. Okay? So, 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 uh, so with this viewpoint you can just uh, proceed. Now when we think of uh, a leader, leader will lead his followers, his group, with some set, with, with some goal. There has to be some purpose behind leading, leading the, uh, leading his group. So in that way, you have Indian texts like the Uwe, which speak about leaders. So, in the Uwe, there was Indra who was a leader. So, Uwe didn't have gods like Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh. No. Uwe had different gods. But, Indra was a leader because he helped the people in, 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 in getting India solve many problems. So there are many different different feats or exploits performed by Hindu. Then there is another god and the god is Rahaspati. He's a teacher. Now, Pati, Guru Guru's Pati, according to the Puranas, Guru's Pati is the Guru of God. But in, in Vedic literature, it is given that Guru's, when gods go, Guru's Pati leads the band of gods. So, so he is called Guru's Pati, and then the famous mantra, since Ranpati is over just two days back, we have a very famous mantra, Gana Namka, Gana Pati Mahavamahe. So there you will use the word. Gana and Pati. Gana and Isha. So the Pati means Swami, Lord. So Gana Pati is the 
is the lord is the swami of the entire gana gana is a group we are a group of gods now this particular gana mandi was actually attributed to him we achieved in line with him in line with him now this ganapati was actually used in the praise of akrasvati but later on it got shifted to ganapati as sama shivapada that we did not enter but the concept of leader and the concept of followers was very much there in the vedic text so we have a tradition of leader and followers that is what i wanted to tell you tell agar nahi hai you want to come to the session you will come to the session what should i say i have a question take it what 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 is it is a central group of god so all the group of god define the no Ram, Ram, Ram. Ram plus 
has his three brothers. Hmm? So the dad got to their education, their moving. Then the so in the course I will explain it in detail. Now the first section ends at a point where Ram defeats Parshura, where it ends. Then in the second section, Ram is proclaimed to be the Ram King. Ram defeats Parshura. Ha, Ram defeats Parshura. So, so he is proclaimed to be the Ram King. Now, uh, then his stepmother, Kaikei, she comes up and says that uh, she that uh, that she, that she, uh, yeah, she, she asks, she says that she, she, she tells the father of Ram, Dasharat, that you have to uh, that, that you have promised me to give uh, boons. Now, now these boons in that I request uh, the three things. First of all, Ram should go to the first. My uh, my brother uh, my son uh, should uh, should be the crown the crown king. And Ram should not be the crown king. So now Dashrat, the Ram is so dear to Dashrat that Dashrat takes it as a shock and he collapses. But Ram, when he comes to know, Ram, now Ram should go to the forest for 14 years, not a very short period. And, and imagine the forest in those days. So, so it was a very dangerous kind of a thing, but Dashrat allows that because Dashrat had given a promise to, 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 to the, the queen. Now, when, when Ram goes to the forest, and the Dashrat, Kaikei, some Bharat comes back. When, when Bharat realizes this, and this is what his mother has done, he blames her, he condemns her action and he says, I am going to bring Ram back. And so he goes to the forest requesting Ram. But Ram refuses, saying that it is a promise which he has given and so he is not going to uh, come back. And he gives his footwear, Paduka, to for to Bharat so that he can worship, he can place them on the throne and, and worship him and then rule the king. So Bharat will not be the direct king, he will not sit on the throne. Then, then uh, Ram Lakshman, the second brother, who is accompanying him in the forest, and his wife Sita, they start travelling from one forest to the other forest. So they enter a forest, which is near Nasik region, Dandakaranya, where they enter the forest, and that forest is highly infested with Rakshasas. So Ram kills the Rakshasas. Some Rakshasas he kills. Then, one sister of Rakshas Ravan. Ravan is the is a demon uh, who is the uh, who, who, who is the king of Lanka, Sri Lanka. So now whether it is Sri Lanka or not is a very controversial question. But right now let us accept it. We, we are not studying geography or history or anything. So uh, so so he uh, so his sister sees Ram and falls in love with him and uh, and takes a very beautiful form and says that I want to marry you. Marry you. Ram then refuses and says that I have, have been in a vow of, of marrying only one woman and I am already married. But my brother Lakshman, you can approach him. And he approach and she approaches him and he refuses, saying, I am his servant, I am to marry his servant. Why do you want to marry me? And when 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 uh, the, the sister of Ravan sees Sita, uh, she gets angry and, and charges towards her. In the front of protecting Sita, Lakshmi chops the nose and ears. Now she goes and complains to the brother and tells him, but see, his wife is very beautiful. Now Ravan is written with desire, describing the beauty. But at that, there are two feelings in him. One is that the desire for having another woman, and the second is revenge. Like, like you deformed my, my sister. See, how will I inflict pain on you? So that is the, the feeling. So with this feeling, he he sends one of his uh, his uncles, Marich, to take the form of a deer, a golden deer. Now uh, the golden deer enters the ashram of of Ram, and uh, the deer just goes on the, the road around the perimeter. Sita is attracted towards uh, towards it, and she tells Ram, "Get to be the deer." Uh, some of them say that she wants to, she to play with the deer, so she wants it. Others, other women say that that she wants to make a blouse, a beautiful blouse of uh, from its hide. 
from the deer skin. Uh, there is a very beautiful saying in Sanskrit that actually Ram knew that nothing like a golden deer can be seen. But even then, he was satiated, he had this unsatiating desire of pleasing his wife. So he went behind the, the deer. So whenever the time of destruction comes, your intellect becomes perverted. Vinasha Kale, So the Ram goes behind and then uh, and then goes behind the deer. He shoots an arrow at the deer, but by, by at the time of death, the deer converts its form and the deer, the Marish takes his form and he shouts with the name Lakshman, Lakshman using the voice of Ram. Now when Sita hears this, she is she's starts she starts and feels that the, that her husband is in danger. So where is Lakshman to go? Lakshman refuses. But still Sita says that no, you have to go with and then you can see Sita threatening him. And then I will take my bread very and make a noose and, and hang myself myself to death, but you go. Now when such type of words are occurred by Sita, Lakshman goes behind. And Ravan takes a chance and Ravan abducts Sita. Now where is Sita gone? So for that then uh, Ram and Lakshman they start searching. When they start searching, they, uh, they meet Hanuma, Subhreen and then they have an agreement. But Subhreen is the exiled king. He is exiled because his brother sent him to the, uh, to the forest. So Ram should kill his brother and place Subhreen on the throne. In return, Subhreen will, uh, will help in uh, finding Sita. Now this is done and then a, a group of Vandaras Vandaras are the monkeys who are telling you to go to, uh, to the, to the in, in search of Sita. They go in all directions. Mm -hmm. One group which has Hanuman. Mm -hmm. They Hanuman as the main leader of, so, uh, yeah, of that other group. Mm -hmm. It goes down south. And when they go down south, they realize that, that Sita is in Lanka. And Hanuman takes a gigantic leap from Rameshwar to to Lanka and, and finds Sita. In that exercise, he is discovered by Ravan and then Ravan decides to punish him by tying the tying his tail, by, by burning his tail. And, and Hanuman takes a chance and burns Lanka and returns back, tells the tells his whereabouts. In due course of time, the entire army of Vandaras of gather in the south, in the ocean, to cross over. Now here, the the brother of Ravan, he says that, he tells Ravan that whatever you are doing is wrong and I will not support you. And so his, the brother Bhishan goes and joins Ravan. Then they create a, a, a bridge, bridge Ram Sehu, which is also known as Adam's Bridge. The bridge is there, now there is a controversy. Whether the bridge is a man-made bridge or whether it is some polar bridge or something like that. So there is a controversy. But we will not enter into it. But I am telling you all this because you should be aware. So, also, also the, the bridge is built and then the, the Vandaras cross over and, and then Rama and Ram then defeats Rama. Now there also you can see the tactics of warfare. So how has the leadership of Ram led the Vandaras to defeat Ravan who was 10,000 times powerful than them? who had all the arms and ammunition, who had all the infrastructure, but he would not make use of the best. So what tactics of Ram mm -hmm. made him successful and what tactics of Ravan caused him defeat? That is something which, which will be, in the course of our lectures, we will be, will be finding out, we will be discussing them. So now when, so when Ravan is killed, Sita is brought back. Ram becomes the king and then there is Rama Raj, he becomes the king. So, so when he becomes the king, then, uh, then one day, now this is a hearsay story, not the exact story as such. There was one washer, his wife comes very late at night. So the washerman refuses to get her in the house, saying that you might have done some adultery, 
who stayed outside the house and then makes a statement that even if King Ram takes his wife in his house in spite of she living in the stranger's place for one year, even then, so though we have this as an example, even then I will not allow you to enter. Enter the uh, enter my house. Now this is heard by the spies. And say and then then Ram feels that there is a grain of doubt in the mind of the subjects about the purity, about the chastity of Sita. Mm. So, so, so as a king, I do not have any right to keep a, a, a queen who is promiscuous by nature because, because her, actually her chastity is good, but people are not willing to accept. Mm. So, she, so then he, the queen is pregnant, she is pregnant. But then he says that I don't, don't have a right to keep such a person in, in, in my kingdom. So, he sends her away. Sita stays in the forest, in, in the forest and gives birth to twins, Lava and Kusha. And, and then Lava and Kusha are not Ramai. And they, they go to the court, they, they, they don't know who is Ram. So they, so they go to his court and sing the Ramai. That is one thing. Meanwhile, Ram declares to perform a very big sacrifice for Ashwamedha. And they release the horse. In the Ashwamed sacrifice, a horse is allowed to roam in the as per his his will. It's a male horse. So as per his will, he should he, he is allowed to roam. Now suppose if he enters my kingdom and uh, horse of your kingdom, you want to perform the sacrifice, you have released. Now if I say I, I will not allow the horse to step in my kingdom, then I will have to fight you. And you are you being powerful, when you will defeat me. I will have to accept your supremacy. If it is not so, suppose if if I stop the horse, mm -hmm. no. Uh, yeah, if, if, if I stop the and suppose if, if I am victorious, then then your Ashwamedha is failed. So that is the thing. Now when the when the horse enters the forest, these two brothers they stop the horse and they are not willing to give the horse. So, so there is a fight, there is a fight with, with Lakshman, then ultimately Ram comes and when, when Ram is, is about to challenge them, Sita interrupts and then tells that she is that he's your father. Now, uh, now when uh, Ram says that, uh, then Ram tells Sita to come home, but Sita refuses, the story is that the earth divides and Sita enters the, the earth. So Ram goes back and then due to some reason Lakshman also has to has to give up his life. So Ram is very sad and then ultimately Ram decides to, to give up his life and, and therefore he also releases his life on the banks of the river Sharayu is one uh, story. Another story is that uh, the aeroplane from the heaven comes, Ram sits in that aeroplane since Ram was a meritorious king, the point which I want to tell you is this. The entire Praja also was equally meritorious. So Ram did not commit any sin following his footsteps. The subjects also, his citizens, his Praja did not commit any sins. And therefore along with him, the subjects also went to the head. So that is the river. So ultimately, all of them died. So, so you have uh, so Sanskrit dramas always have good endings, but Sanskrit poetry like Ramayana and Mahabharata, they don't have a very happy ending. The ending is a sad ending where everyone they, they go. Now some people say that his avatar was over and therefore they, he had to uh, he had to go. So, so that that is the story of uh, Ramayana. In, in a nutshell, there are many linkages which I have avoided in the course of developing the lecture. We will. Uh, we will go on. So when you think of the aspects of leadership, see you have the king as the leader, you have uh, uh, you have political leadership, you have leadership related to sovereignty, so you have Shivaji Maharaj as the leader, then you have uh, Gandhiji as the leader, you have spiritual leadership in the form of Vivekananda and many other godmen. 
Leadership can even percolate even up to the household, where the Bruhastha, the head of the family, he is the leader because he sees to it that the well-being of the entire family is achieved. So, so I would always say that leadership always follows an inclusive growth model. So growth is not of one person, but the growth is of the entire family. So the entire family grows, then the, the relatives grow. In this way, you can see that the society also grows because of certain individuals. Now, if you see esoterically, you see in the light of spirituality, the, if you are performing any ritual, one who does the ritual, one who takes the entire responsibility of the ritual is the leader over there. So Brahma is one priest in a sacrifice. So he takes the responsibility of, of performing the rituals in such a way that the Yajama, the person who, in whose name the ritual is performed, will get the best benefits of it. Then, when we think of philosophy, when we think of the body and the soul, the soul is the leader and the soul leads the body towards well-being. So there you can see. So minutest aspect of leadership is there over there. Then manas is the leader for our sense organs. Mind. Mind. So so you can say that so these are the different minute the, you can say uh, micro dimensions of leadership. The macro may be the, the upliftment of the entire universe. But the micro may be the upliftment of, of our own self. So, so when we say find out the leader in you, is find out how you will, you will uplift for yourself to be happy. Upliftment does not always mean to have a uh, lot of wealth or, uh, or uh, all material pleasures. So it, it, is, it is actually to be happy in, in your life, to be happy, to be satisfied. So, so, so these are the different dimensions of leadership. So when I was thinking about this, I said, that there is a very beautiful uh, uh, allegory. Allegory is, is you can say, uh, examples. So, so it is it is said that the Atma, see there is a chariot. Chariot has got horses. Then, the horses have got their reins, R-E-I-N-S. Reins are, uh, are there. Then there is a Sarathi, the chariot there. Then there is a chariot. Hmm? And, and then there is a person who owns the chariot. The, 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 the one who is travelling, the traveller who is there. Now, the one who is sitting in the chariot, okay, he is Atma, the soul. The chariot is the body. Okay? Intellect is the charioter. Buddhi, mind, buddhi, 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 intellect is the chariot. The reins of the horses is, uh, is the mind. Horses are our Indriyas. Now it is how should the Sarathi be there? How should the reins be there? So that the reins can control the horses. So that the charioter will, will decide what is the destination. Now, if the charioter is not up to the mark, if the reins are not properly trained, then the horses will determine the destination. Okay? So, so, so this is how you can see that. So, so to have a good destination, to have a good aim, goal in life, we have to think of leadership. So, this is how the Indian tradition has, has viewed that leadership. This is the reference which I have given from the Upanishad. Okay? Upanishads. So as you have the Vedas, you have the Upanishads. After the Upanishads, then you have Ramayana Mahabharat. After Ramayana Mahabharat, you have other texts like your Kautilya Arthashastra. So Kautilya Arthashastra is not just one text, there are many other texts also. Even up to the time of Shatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, there, ha there have been books written on how should a king be a good leader. What are the different aspects of his leadership? How should he be able to control his kingdom? What should be the law and order? So all these dimensions are there in the 
about one unique concept of hereditary genius. Means what? The father is the king. So he has that ability and therefore from so from him the, 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 the capacity of being a king is transferred to the children, to his son or daughter. In case of European countries, we can see the woman also being the, the monarch, the, the chief. So, so in case of India, you will see that there are women as, as uh, who, who, who have ascended the throne, but not fully. There, it's partial. So, uh, so, so in India, you have the the the, 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 male, the eldest male member to be the king. So now this aspect is there which is known as hereditary genius. Now if you look at Ramayan, see the Rama in the Ramayan, how was Dasharat? Did Dasharat have children? Four, five, five. Initially Dasharat did not have children. He had actually to tell you the reality, he had one daughter. Yes. Okay? He had one daughter, uh, his, uh, her name is Shanta. And then she, she was given an adoption to some other king, the king named Romapath. Uh, he, she was given in adoption. And now Dasharat longed for a male child. Okay? Why she was given Friend, he was his friend. friend and he and was feeling very lonely. And okay. his friend loved and loved his kids. Yeah. He wanted like. And so, daughter was. So, so, these are isolated examples where you can see the daughter given in the video. Not at all, not at all. It is, it is not mentioned. It is uh, it is mentioned in hardly one or two places. Yes. And then there is one a beautiful drama called Uttaram Charitam. There again this, this is mentioned over there, there about uh, the about the daughter. The daughter's okay. husband hmm. who is a Rishi who performs that. Yes. Uh, yes. He, he performs he performs actually he performs a sacrifice due to which uh, uh, the, the, yeah. No. It's not like that. Now uh, the, the story is that Ra, uh, uh, Dasharat didn't have any children, so he longed for a for, for children, and then he decides to perform Ashwamed sacrifice for getting children. After performing the Ashwamed sacrifice, then the daughter's husband comes and performs another sacrifice called Putra Kamishti. When he is performing the Putra Kamishti, one particular form emerges and says that this is the payasa which I have, which I have. So give this payasa to your queens and they will and they will bear children. So Dasharat, see how it is. Dasharat gives half of the pious to Kausalya, his first queen, half of the pious to Kaike, the second queen. And then both of them realize that Sumitra is not given anything, they give half half of their pious to her. So, Kausalya bears the eldest son Ram, Kaiki bears Bharat, and Sumitra bears Lakshman and Chaturna. So, so Lakshman and Chaturna are twins. Okay? So, Lakshman and Chaturna are twins. So, this is the uh, this is the story. So you will see that now, now why did Dasharat want to want to become a uh, wanted a male child because he wanted somebody to rule over the kingdom, a, a male child to rule over the kingdom. So you can see that in the concept of leadership, this aspect of hereditary genius, which is spoken by Galton, somewhere in the 19th century, we have we, we, we have we have been following this model. Hereditary genius is is also discussed by Kautilya. When when the king has to uh, appoint ministers, Kautilya gives lot of discussion as to what should be the criteria for the appointment of ministers. Now in that there is one criteria, and the criteria is that minister's son can become the minister. Okay. So here also you can see that the aspect of hereditary genius is followed. Okay? 
So, so this hereditary genius is seen in is seen across different texts. Even if you see Mahabharat, Mahabharat, what is the reason behind the Mahabharat war? Throne. Throne. And and the fight is between cousins. Now the fight between cousins took a took the shape of the boy war. Okay. So, so it is a fight for the throne. And 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 what is the reason for that? No, no, fight for the throne. No, because both are from. Now, uh, one was able and one was uh, uh, Now, uh, there, there are three, three uh, contenders. First one was Dhritarashtra, second one was Pandu, and the third one was Vidur. Now, Vidur is out of question because Vidur is Dasi Putra. So, the matter of genes was something which was thought about. So, Vidur became nullified. Then now, the, the Dhritarashtra is the eldest, but Dhritarashtra is disabled. Because he is he's blind, he is he's physically challenged. So, he cannot be the ideal. ideal. So, he is out of question. Therefore, Pandu becomes the king. king. Now, when Pandu becomes the king, now, did Pandu have children? Initially, no. But then he had children. Out of them, Yudhishthir was the eldest. But meanwhile, Duryodhan was also born. But the time when Yudhishthir was born was earlier than the, the birth time and birth day of Duryodhan. Understood this? Now, now came the next question. So, who will be the king? After the death of Pandu, Dhritarashtra became the king. Not after the death, when Pandu left the kingdom, Dhritarashtra became the king. Now Dhritarashtra's eldest son or the former king Pandu's eldest son. That is the problem. Technical problem was there. Now, now technically Yudhishthir is the eldest in, in both the overall eldership. Yes. So Yudhishthir is senior. Senior. Oh, senior. So Yudhishthir is senior. But then came another problem. Were the children of Pandu his children? No. no. They were not his children. They were the children of So, so biologically, biologically, the argument of of Duryodhan stood that he is the biological son of his father. But then came another problem. Was Dhritarashtra the biological father? <laughs> 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 the not father, but Dhritarashtra was the biological son of his father. No. The king. No. no. It was so, 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 yeah. So, so, so in this way, there is there is the fight, Let and that see. is the reason. So, 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 which who should be the the biological heir to the throne? Therefore, you can see that this hereditary genius has created wars. In, in, in Indian texts at least. We don't we cannot speak about the historicity of Ramayana of Mahabharata. This is not a platform to discuss. But at least in the text you can see that it is hereditary. So heredity has created number of problems. In fact, uh, Rashi was only in charge king. He was only the caretaker. Yeah. Not yeah. The so yes, exactly, as... exactly. So 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 the the another uh, argument is that he, he was he was not the crowned king. So there is no reference to Dhritarashtra yes. being the crown king, but uh, but there are uh, caretaker. Yeah. Huh. Caretaker. So 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 there are so many arguments which are uh, which are there. Yeah. So so also for leadership, when we think of the concept of leadership, then what in a hereditary genius, what is required? What things are, are there? You can see talent, you can see skills, you can see physical characteristics. So all these characteristics were essential for a, a king who is an ideal leader. Now Ram was groomed in that manner. So there is one important episode which uh, we will be discussing in today's lecture and that is the Episode in first section of Ramayana, where 
can see how was a prince groomed to to become a a king. So so one has to so so being a king is a very big responsibility. So you have to see that the subjects are happy. When can the subjects be happy? When their necessities are fulfilled. Okay, and and secondly, there is law and order. So the differentiation point between uh, a common man and the king is that that the king has got the divine right to punish someone. A common man does not have this right. So a common leader and even a uh, a king. The differentiating point is that the king has got this right of using using something known as. Danda. Okay, so this danda is very important, and uh, and so what type of danda should be used? Why is danda essential? Maintain law and order. Yeah, but they said, but our text put it in a very beautiful way. They say that if danda is very coercive, choose na. So don't go choose na. If danda is like that, then people. Then the entire praja leads a life of fear, and you will see our cultivator and other texts also. They say that praja also should be fearless. Hmm? So that should be abhayed. So say, suppose if the if the king is very lenient, then what is the situation? The situation is that of. What is Matsya Narnya? In the Marathi they know it. Badi ko kanpil. Hmm. So, so in 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 this, huh? Huh? Might is right. Might is right. So, so large fish in a pond. Large fish devour the smaller fish. Danda should control the large fish and install confidence in the small fish. Okay. So otherwise, large fish will eat the small fish. That is Matsyana. To avoid that, danda should be something which is which is well defined, well decided, which which will control the uh, the powerful and protect the the weak. So that is the idea. And across sections, say you see even in the Mahabharat, you can see that that danda, there is extensive discussion on danda. There is one chapter where. Uh, After the Mahabharat War, see Bhishma. Did did Bhishma die in the Mahabharat War? No. 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 He, he was just lying on the bed of arrows. Hmm? He didn't die. So after when Yudhishthira became a king, he he goes and seeks the blessings of Bhishma, and then Bhishma gives an advice. <laughs> That advice covers almost. Say two hundred to three hundred chapters. Okay, it doesn't mean that Bhishma was alive for so much time. He might have given something in fiction. The poets might have expanded it. So that is there. So, but 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 that is known as Shanti Parva and Anushasan Parva Parvan. So that also somewhere we will be discussing in the class. That is noted. That is noted. Yeah, that is noted over there. So that is something which is which is very 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 important. So there also they discuss about such a kind of a situation. So therefore, to avoid such a kind of a situation where might is right, as he has rightly put. So so to avoid such a kind of situation, a king needs to be groomed, needs to be trained. So how will you protect your subjects who are weak? So the episode is such that all the four children, Ram, Lakshman, Bharat, Chaturudhan. All these four children, they start growing up, and they take the initial training. They take the initial training at the hands of Vishwamitra, at the hands of Vasishtha. So their guru is Vasishtha. Yeah, Vasishtha Lord. So their guru is Vasishtha. Now, when they take the training at uh, at at his hands, they are they are quite good. But one day. Say Vishwamitra comes. Now, can you tell me the background of Vishwamitra? 
he comes to the court of Dasharat. Leader should be one 
who should, who should go directly to the masses. And also, when the leader would go directly to the masses, he will have mass appeal. Then he can, he can take decisions, he can contribute, and then there can be followers generated for the leaders. So these were the dimensions which, which were there when Dasharat, what is it? When Dasharat agreed to, uh, to send Ram to the, to the forest. So, so when they sent Ram and when they were traveling, it was not just sightseeing. In the course of travel, Vishwamitra taught them, imparted all knowledge of weaponry to them. Therefore, I told you that he was Raja. So he was an excellent fighter. Okay, so the so the so weaponry, then the knowledge of different astras were also given to them. Okay? So so naturally the cognitive ability, the cognitive ability of these two brothers, it developed. So not so, so not just mere training in the in the ashram. You are a prince and the prince is sent to the ashram of Vasishta where he is learning the Vedas, where he is learning different different uh, shastras, etc. So it was not mere textual study, it was practical hardcore work. So teaching them archery, teaching them different weapons, teaching them the, 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 the secret knowledge of astras. So all this was given to them whereby their cognitive ability in these brothers increased. Then apart from that, what was the motive? Was motive mere learning? No. The motive was protection of subjects. So, so as a leader who is supposed to guide his followers, so he is supposed to acquaint himself with the with the subjects. Okay? So so naturally, so so, so you can say that motive then values. See, when when somebody is following one particular type of religion or one particular type of worship, you are not supposed to interrupt that or say bad about it. So that element of tolerance was important. Okay? Now, the Rakshasas didn't have that aspect of tolerance. So, whenever the sacrifices would be performed, see the Ramayana speaks about this. That wherever the sacrifices would be performed, the major complaint of the sages was that these Rakshasas are not allowing us to practice our religion peacefully. There, there is a fight. So, so this is the value. So, the value of tolerance. Even if you don't agree, you have to tolerate it. The value of tolerance. Then, the value of uplifting the downtrodden. So such type of values were inculcated amongst these others. Now in the course of this particular episode where the brothers are, have gone to the, uh, the forest along with Vishwam, not the exile kind of thing, along with Vishwam, yeah, there, is, there is one particular thing that they enter a particular place which is completely, which is like a desert. Trees have dried up, earth is barren, there are cracks everywhere, there is no life. Now, the brother, now Ram asks, how come we have seen a forest which is lush green and suddenly we have seen this change? Then there comes a, the answer that this is the land which is ruled by a devil is called
face dilemma and come to one particular and, and, and take a final call and take an action is the training which, which Ram got in the first. So, so there is an exchange of dialogue and I have got that with, with me. If you, you can keep it. I am not giving it as an assignment. Just for your reference. You can have that. So he says that Sriyaha avadhyaha that is women are not started as a woman. How can I kill her? So, uh, so he is so, uh, and then he says that women are, are not supposed to be killed. So there is no death sentence for women. So then there comes a question that you are seeing what is happening around you. You are seeing that the earth has also refused to, to produce something. I will give you this reference. Such type of references are rampant in ancient texts. See, it is the rule of the king which defines fertility of land. So the intensity of good rule is that all the five Mahabhutas, Prithvi, Aptej, Vayu, Akash, all the five Mahabhutas function at their fullest. But if the rule of the kingdom of that king is, is not right, then the earth starts withdrawing herself. So this happened when there was a tyrant king named Ven. When Ven was a king, he was a tyrant king. There was no law and order. The entire earth was barren. Then when he was killed by the sages, his son became the king who was very good. Not hereditary genius. Okay, what we did right now. Kingship was genius. Yeah, he did not so yeah. Kingship was hereditary, but genius was not there. So when the when the son became the king, he his rule was, was very good. So the earth stood in, in front of him as a cow and said, Milk me, I will shower all the riches. And then there was there, there was uh, greenery everywhere. Okay? Then so th this is a very old reference. So based on that, when Tataka was, was looking after the forest, the forest had withdrawn everything. So he is saying what, what you are seeing what is the situation. So if the situation is so bad, can't you think of taking such a kind of a decision? That, that are you going to just think, think of only one criteria that she is a woman and she should not be killed? So you have to take a decision and then Ram decides and then Ram kills her. Okay, so, so this is a, so during trying times, there are conflicting, uh, conflicting decisions, how to reach to one decision and be confident about it, accept that you have done it, all of that. So that is the training which Ram got in the, in, in this, in this Vishwamitra, Vishwamitra episode. Then, uh, when the Rakshasas attack, the sacrifice, the, the entire Ram destroyed the Rakshasas and, and secured peace, secured calmness in that region, secured tolerance in that region. In due course of time, when they were traveling, they came to another place which was very sad and dusty. Okay, so they came to a place which was very sad, dusty, gloomy and there, there was a rock. Vishwamitra requested them to touch the rock and, and out emerged, out emerged a woman, very radiant after performing severe penance. Now this is the episode of Ahalya. So, so what is the story behind this? Ahilya was cursed by her husband, Rishi. Why? Indra had taken her, his husband's form, her husband's form, hmm. and then he had gone to with Ahilya. And then he noticed, it means his husband saw that Indra had taken his form and Ahilya could not recognize him. Hmm. He's your, he was not your husband and still yeah. you enjoyed with him. And so then he Yeah, was, so, so it, 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 it was against the norms of chastity the norms and rules of chastity in those days and now actually if you see there is something very something important to say hello yeah uh, uh, no no i am in the lecture 
a challenge which is uh, which is beyond the capacity of a normal human being. And this episode actually elevated the position of Ram from a human to a superhuman because there is something which is totally unusual about Ram that he could break the bow. And this superhuman attribute is also associated with Sita because in some stories, now it is nowhere, yeah, in some, in some stories it is given that Sita uh, takes the, uh, uh, Sita plays with the bow when she was small, she, she used to, uh, she used to consider the bow as a toy horse and used to play with that bow. So Sita had this capacity, so there should be a suitor for Sita who will have equal physical capacity. Therefore, this particular challenge was proposed by Sita's father, Janaka. And Ram succeeded in, in that challenge. Now, this episode of Vishwamitra <coughs> ends, at, ends at a story where, uh, where, uh, where, uh, where when, uh, when Ram starts returning home along with Sita. Now, the, now when, the, when Ram gets married to Sita, Sita also has three other sisters. So those three other sisters also get married to the three brothers. Okay, now when Ram and Sita were returning, they were returning in a chariot, down comes the, 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 the comes Parshuram. And, and Parshuram challenges, uh, challenges Ram. You have, uh, you have uh, uh, broken my bow, now you have to fight with me. And here Ram defeats Parshuram. And, and then it is said that there ended, so Parshuram then retreated uh, from, uh, from his active uh, life of, of killing the Kshatriyas and then, then, then goes back, goes to perform penance. Now why was this episode given? This episode showed that how is the power of Kshatriyas, how is the royal power succeeding the, the power of the Brahmins? So, so those, uh, so this is the this is the take home which is given in the in this episode that, that how can so how can Ram be a supreme power? See when see what is the what is the exploit with which Parshuram is acquainted with? Parshuram is acquainted with the exploit of killing Kshatriyas twenty one times. Now if Ram is supposed to be the supreme king. He should, he should always be even supreme to Ashura. And, and then so, so now you can see that Ram was groomed, well groomed to be a leader. Okay? Leader and to be the crown king. So he, and here ends the, the, the first section of Ramayana. And then so, so then, then what type of challenges did Ram face? So that is something which, which we'll be discussing somewhere in the next class. Yes, yes, yes. These are certain set of shlokas which are supposed to be recited every day or in the morning. I was not aware of it. Okay. So, we will stop over here and then I will require at least to make your three, four questions I will require for. I know you are feeling the class was good because this is my first experience. When will be your next session? Next session we will decide with the Radha Krishna.